All right, folks, it's good to, good to have everybody here this morning. Appreciate them playing. And we're through the holidays and time to go on now and see what God's got in store for us. I've watched the Lord answer prayer just in the last few days. He does answer prayer, folks. Father, as we open the pages of this book, give us wisdom, Lord. And then, Father, give me the gift of teaching. Give the folks hearts to receive it. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Now, this morning, we're going to be covering some heavy-duty material and the kind of thing that <clears throat> we're going to launch into it. And uh, I hope it stimulates your thinking. Scripture says that my people are story for lack of knowledge. For the most part, the last place in the country you want to go to to learn anything is the church. You're going to find that people who... Uh, uh, who seldom ever darken the door of a church have done more research into the, uh, into the political, religious, and secular situation than the church people have. And that's a shame. But, on the other hand, I'm going to give you a prime example this morning of the seduction and deception that has uh, settled down over the church. It's settling in. A lot of people have the erroneous idea that uh, the church is uh, a religious institution. The Lord Jesus Christ has no use for religion. Amen. If you remember when he was here 2,000 years ago, every opportunity he had, he assaulted religion. And he assaulted the religious leaders of his day. And uh, the problem is that people categorize things, and that's a shame. They categorize it. They say, well, this is the secular world, this is the religious world, this is the institutional world, this is the business world, this is my home world, so forth and so on. I'm here one way, I'm there another way, I'm over here another way, they know me this way over here, they know me that way over there, they know me this way over here, and so forth and so on. Whereas you should be the same everywhere you go. And there is no place on this earth you go to to get away from the Lord God Almighty who upholds all things by the word of his power. He's the Lord God in here and out there. He's the Lord God when you clock in in the morning on your job. And he's the Lord God when you walk through the front door of your house. He's the Lord God. So in 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2, <clears throat> verse number 7, the word of God says, The mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let, that's to hinder, until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believed not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Now, I don't know if you realize how, how uh, serious and severe that statement is. The fact is, that's one of the most serious statements in all the Bible. And the reason I say that is because God directly intervenes to see to it that certain group is uh, condemned. He personally intervenes. The deception that's coming is greater than any of us ever imagined. And uh, no more than five, ten years ago, and I remember when I first started the ministry, uh, the prophecy teachers were, were I've got their books, they're, they're, they're available. You can get into their, into their book. For the most part, just to, to boil it down to a simple statement, they're worthless. Because nothing has happened the way they said it would. But what is happening is an erosion, a decay, a corruption that is settling down today. And people don't know what to do. Now, I'm going to read you a list of what I believe, not I, but what I believe from a woman on the internet. I was doing some research the other day and came upon this. The reason I'm going to read this is because she covers so much ground. And I'm going to show you how deception works. And I want, you to, uh, I want you to take it in this morning. Because you know that, that I believe the Bible is the word of God. Number one, I believe this King James Bible is the word of God. I believe in the new birth. 
You must be born again. I believe the new birth is only through the God man, second man, last Adam. I believe that. And I know that I have been born again. I know I've passed from death into life. I wouldn't be here this morning if I hadn't been. I had no reason to come in here. I'd be drunk somewhere. I'd be in hell. But I'm saved. God changed my life. That's why I'm here. Now I want you to listen to these things. I'm going to read a few of them off and then we'll discuss them. Number one, she says, I believe in Yahushua is God in the flesh. That's a refer reference back to a Hebrew, Yahushua, Joshua. Uh, you notice that she didn't say Jesus. I'll tell you why in a moment. But she says, I believe in Yahushua is God in the flesh who came to earth to redeem mankind, was crucified on the cross and arose three days later defeating sin and death. Number two, I believe that salvation is available to all races and nations and that the new covenant replaced the Old Testament seed line of Israel. Those who worship and follow him are the new Israel regardless of seed line, race, or nation. That's a loaded statement. But we'll go on. I believe that while the pagans glory in the suffering of Yahashua on the cross, we are to glory in his resurrection. Number four. I believe the King James Bible purposely mistranslated the name of the Son of God from Yahashua to Jesus, and that this Jesus being taught in the majority of churches today is not Yahashua himself, but Satan. Number five, I believe the King James Bible is the modern day Garden of Eden containing the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil through the two different gospels being preached throughout it. The gospel of the kingdom, tree of life, taught by Yahashua, and I bring to you another gospel, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, taught by the false prophet or false apostle, Paul. One leads to eternal life, while the other leads to apostasy, error, and away from the teachings of Yahashua and his twelve apostles. I believe there are twelve apostles appointed by the Lord and not thirteen. Matthias replaced Judas, not Paul. I believe John's warning at the end of the book of Revelation of adding to or subtracting from his book was exactly that, his book, and doesn't pertain to the King James Version since it didn't exist at that time. Churches abuse this passage to keep their sheeple, that's a buzzword, in apostasy and under religious mind control. I believe the King James Version contains the inspired Word of God, but in itself, as an in entirety, is a manipulated manuscript leaving out the inspired, now listen carefully, leaving out the inspired books of Enoch, Jasher, and the Jubilees, and replaced with a Roman Catholic agent provocateur, St. Paul whose books teach and replace the gospel of the kingdom with his own gospel of grace, which leads readers away from celebrating the feast of the Lord and into adopting pagan rituals and customs. I believe that Paul's ah morality, becoming all things to all people, compromised the way and truth of the gospel of Yahashua, which grants adherents a license to sin mentally, and leads them into false doctrines such as tongue speaking and the rapture of the church and negating the celebrating of the feast of the Lord and the Father's commandment of celebrating the Sabbath on the seventh day, Saturday. I believe that close to 99% of the false teachings in the churches today are based on St. Paul's teachings leading people astray. Then she gives a reference to a website. I believe Satan has an offspring on earth. Now listen carefully. I believe Satan has an offspring on earth as quoted by Yahashua, the apostles, and taught in Enoch, she's quoting Enoch as an authority now, known as the serpent seed line, and that St. Paul was of this serpent seed line, and the very one Yahashua warned us of before he left. I believe Daniel's warning, they shall mingle with the seed of men, is the fulfillment of the seed line today. I believe the Jews governing Israel today are the fake Khazar Jews. That's a different element. We talk about that later. What's a Khazar Jew? What are we talking about? And serpent seed line Jews who are running the nation on a political ideology of Satanism forward slash Zionism 
and a new world order rather than a theology. I believe the Holocaust was implemented by these Talmudic worshipping serpent seed line Jews such as Adolf Hitler, she just said Hitler was a Jew, who wanted to eliminate the Torah, Yahashua, believing Jews, so that the fake Jews could establish their own homeland of Israel to be dominated by themselves. I believe the New World Order and Zionism are mere forms of Satanism and working together to lead the world into the worship of Satan and paving the way for the arrival of the Antichrist. I believe that aliens and UFOs are fallen angels and will fulfill Joel 2 and Revelation chapter 9, the last days. I believe that America is the last days Babylon prophesied in Revelation chapter 18. I believe that the elect and the church are two different groups and that there are two groups of 144,000. The first group being the elect, the second group being from the church. I believe that as the apostate woman, the church, who will give rise to the Antichrist through their support of Zionism, the New World Order. Now, did you take all that in? This is what the church is supposed to do, teach. You understand what I mean? I'm responsible to teach you the Word of God and to deal with stuff like this because this stuff is running rampant. All right, now let me show some things that are not mentioned in this, in this I believe. Number one, there's not one word about the new birth. I read it two or three times, not a word. The word blood is never mentioned one time. Not one time. Every time she mentions church, it comes out in a hiss. To her, the believers in Yahashua should be recognizing and, 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 and uh, you know, honoring the Jewish feast days. She says that the, and she doesn't want to use the term church, but she says that the believers in Yahashua are literally replacing Israel. See? Now, in order for her, and, and then of course she quotes as an authority, the, uh, the book of Enoch, the book of Jasher, and the book of Jubilees, which are, uh, which are three of the many books that are outside the Bible, which fall into a number of different categories, the Apocrypha, the Pseudepigraphic Writings, and other so-called uh, inspired uh, scriptures, there's many of them, many. Fact is, the list goes on and on and on. Now, she quotes as an authority these books and throws out the biggest majority of the New Testament. How did she throw it out? Because she threw Paul out. In order for her to build her case, she has to demonize Paul. See? She has to demonize him. And by demonizing the Apostle Paul, then she's able then to, to set about and, and create, and this is all created out of her mind. She has done a lot of reading, no doubt, and there are some elements of truth in this. That's where the deception comes from. The deception comes from not a full lie, but from a, from a part lie mixed with the truth. That's the greatest deception. Now, this woman right here says that she's under an enormous attack and that she's persecuted all the time, so forth and so on, because of her position. Well, I'm, I'm not going to give you her name. Uh, the, uh, I'm not going to give the name out here. You can do your own research. I'll give you the name after the service. But uh, I just happened upon her because I was doing a little research myself and her website popped up. And I thought, well, now here's somebody that's talking about reptilians and all of this stuff. Let's see what she believes. And so when I got onto this web, onto this page where she talks about what she believed, I was astounded. I was astounded because of her attack on the Bible. You remember what I told you about Thomas Jefferson? You remember what I told you? Then I have great respect for Thomas Jefferson, one of the fathers of our country. But if you don't know this, you need to know this, that he went to the New Testament and he took out portions of the New Testament that he did not believe, uh, that he did not believe portrayed the Lord Jesus Christ correctly. What did he base that on? Your clue's as good as mine. You know, what authority do you have for authority? You have to have authority. What authority? I'm not interested in your opinion. You know, how you feel, and especially what it has to do with, with, with the news media today. What's your authority for your doctrine, for your knowledge of God, Christ? What is it? What's your authority? And this is why, as I've harped on it so many times before, 
the canon of Scripture is so important? 66 books. 39 Old Testament, 27 New. Is that important? If you do not believe in the canon of Scripture, then you can join right up with the camp of this woman right here because she doesn't believe in the canon of Scripture. She, she assaulted it. She assaulted the Apostle Paul. Now, she went to a, to a, to a, to a, a, a very uh, controversial passage over there in the book of Acts where the Apostle Paul, where when Judas uh, committed suicide, they needed somebody to replace him. You've read that, haven't you? Well, how did they do that? How did they, how did they choose somebody to replace Judas? And this is where the big controversy comes in. They cast lots. All right, they cast lots. And so the lot fell upon Matthias, and many, many people in the church today, and I mean good people, say that, that, the, that, uh, that, uh, they were, that they were way out of order, and that God's choice for Judas was Paul, and that God uh, did not uh, choose the casting of lots uh, to, to get it to replace, uh, the, to, to replace Judas Iscariot. All right, now, that's a separate study in itself, but uh, the Apostle Paul, I personally believe, I firmly believe this, I believe that the 66 books of this Bible are inspired scripture. Amen. And that's all. I do believe, as I've told you before, when we talked about Antiochus IV, the Epiphanes, we talked about how that he's recorded in the book of Maccabees. We talked about how that uh, the Feast of Hanukkah comes out of the book of Maccabees. We talked about how that historically the book of Maccabees is, is probably accurate in a, little, in a lot of its historical uh, narrative that Josephus quotes it and others, that, we, that it's come down to us as a historical record. But I never go, I never, I never, I never, I never, I never go to any other book of the Bible, any other book outside the Bible, but the Bible itself for doctrine. You get in trouble. You're going to get in big trouble. You're going to get in trouble real fast. Because some of the apocryphal books teach that you can pay money to have your sins forgiven. They've got all kinds of weird places that the dead go to. They've got all kinds of strange stuff in them that's been rejected. Now, what I, I just read to you, I just read to you what this woman believes. Now, the purpose of this class in here is to study. This is Sunday school, you know. So let's study. Let's look at some of these things. Let's deal with them. And let's see where she's coming from. Uh, do you believe that the deception of the last days will be so strong that even the very elect could be deceived? All right. So, all right. Now, if I, let me, let me, I don't know how to put this. Let me, let me try to put it some way where you can, where I can, where you can get a hold of it. What is your absolute authority for knowing you're not going to be deceived? How I feel? That won't work. My friends, that's not going to get it. Church I go to. Tradition of the elders. I only have, I've got one thing that's going to keep me from getting messed up. The Bible. The Bible. All right. Now, notice, remember, she never mentioned the new birth one time. All right. Do you know who is big on the new birth? The Lord Jesus said, John 3, ye must be born again. He made the statement. But who defined it? Exactly. The Apostle Paul defined it. He broke it down into its elements and told you what it was all about. The Lord Jesus mentions it, but Paul defines it. Well, now she threw Paul out. She threw the new birth out because she has no definition of it. She has no authority for it except from what the Lord said. All right? Except that you must be born again. All right? What does that mean? You must be born again. The Apostle Paul uh, gets into the doctrine of the new birth and explains it very, very clearly. All right. Now let's look at it. She said, I believe Yahashua is God in the flesh. Is she correct about him being God in the flesh? Absolutely he's God in the flesh. Who came to earth to redeem mankind, crucified on the cross, arose three days later, defeating sin and death. Is that correct? Absolutely. So she starts her first one by giving you something that Christians believe. I started reading this and I thought, well, that's right. I didn't know what this woman believed until <laughs> I got down here and she threw Paul out. I thought, I've got a hold of something now. <laughs> so she said, I believe that he is God in the flesh. All right, now, why not the name Jesus? She said that the King James translators intentionally mistranslated the word. All right. Now, what's wrong with Jesus? What's wrong with the word Jesus? Right? She, there's some, it just eats her up, doesn't it? Now, Jesus is not a Hebrew name. 
Jesus is not a Hebrew name. In fact, Jesus is not even a Greek name. Jesus is the Greek word. All right? Jesus. Iota, Eta, Sigma, uh, Upsilon, and Sigma, I think it is. I'd have to go back and look at the text. All right? Jesus. That's the word. That's Greek. All right? But when you carry it from Greek over into English, what do you get? You get Jesus. Jesus is Jesus. Now, in the Old Testament, Joshua was a type of Jesus. And even in the book of Acts chapter number 8, when it's referring to that Old Testament text, talking about Joshua, instead of saying Joshua there, it says what? Jesus puts his name in it. All right. She starts off by baiting you. That's called a bait. She baits you and has you believe, well, my goodness gracious, let's see what this woman has to say because I agree with that. I agree with that. All right. Point number two. I believe there's salvation available to all races and nations. Is that true? Absolutely. I have no problem with that. And that the new covenant replaced the Old Testament seed line of Israel. I thought, uh-oh, red flag. Red flag. Now, if you went in the average church today, they wouldn't have a clue what you're even talking about. But when you go to the book of Hebrews, you remember I told you it's a transitional book? Hebrews is transitional doctrinally. The book of Acts is transitional historically. There are two transitional books, Acts and Hebrews. They're very important. Who is that new covenant to in Hebrews chapter number 8? There's a new covenant in Hebrews 8, and it's as clear as the nose on your face, and it's not Gentiles. It's the house of Israel. Time and again, he said, I will make a covenant with the house of Israel. Here's why she doesn't like Paul. Because Paul in Romans chapter number 11 makes it plain that Zion, salvation will roar out of Zion, and salvation for will be for Israel, and so all Israel shall be saved. That's a future thing. But she has to deal with that. How am I going to deal with that since I've made the believers today Israel? How does she deal with it? Throw it out. That's the way to deal with it. Like Jehudi did, take a pen knife, cut it out, and throw it out the door. That's what she did. Now, let me ask you a question. What authority does she have? Did she quote? Did you see reference to any footnote authority or reference to anything that gave her the authority to throw out what the Apostle Paul said? Did you hear any? Did you hear any? There's no authority for that. What authority? In other words, we're getting into manuscript evidence. All right? I have, <clears throat> I've got, uh, I've got um, uh, Nestle's critical apparatus. What's that? I've, I've mentioned it to you before, time and again, but it's been a while. It's a little blue book. It's about this wide. Last time I, about that wide, about that tall. It goes through every single passage in the New Testament. Every last one of them. Every single word in the New Testament. It gives you the manuscript authority for that word and its location in the scripture. It gives you the manuscripts. It gives you the unctuals. It gives you the cursives. It gives you the, it gives you the, the lexicons. It gives you the, the uh, I forget whatever. There's a lot of things involved in it that they refer back to. Uh, lectionaries and all this stuff that compiles, that brings together a New Testament. It's a big deal. It's a very complicated process. It's not a simple thing. Not at all. Not at all. If a man's going to sit down and make up a Greek, man, a, a Greek, uh, a Greek uh, uh, for example, Erasmus, Stephanus, Elzever, uh, Colonnaeus, they made up a Greek text. And from that Greek text, if you're a Greek scholar, you can translate into English, French, German, Spanish, Portuguese, Italian, Swahili. You can translate from that Greek text into any language on earth. So what you got? So with the Greek text, you've got the text of the New Testament. From that can be translated into any language you take. Martin Luther took it and he translated into the German language. Okay. But here's the problem. The problem is the formulation of the Greek text. What authority do you, do you appeal to for words that are different? Because they do differ. But even them, even the Alexandrian text, even the authors of the New American Standard Version, the Revised Version, Good News for Modern Man, and all the rest of them. And I know I'm getting technical, but it's important to understand this. Even they agree to the authority of the fact that the books you have in the New Testament are New Testament books. And never one time appeal to the apocryphal books that she appealed to. See what I'm saying? 
What's her authority for throwing out two thirds of the New Testament? Let's get ready to say that. Seems like even with her title, what I believe, she has now put herself as the authority. She's the authority. And what she has done is create a a system of belief. Okay? But what I've said to you is important now. This is very important. Very important. How many books do you have in the New Testament? Twenty seven. You've got 27 books in the New Testament. Roman Catholic Church has more books in their Bible than you do. Okay? What books do they have that you don't have? Exactly. Therefore, they can teach doctrines that come from the Apocrypha that aren't in the Bible, and they, that becomes part, of their, becomes part of their system of belief. All right? The doctrines that come from the Apocrypha. We don't accept that. i got 66 of them. 39 old, 27 new. All right, one more time. To wear it out. What authority does she quote to throw out two-thirds of the New Testament? This is the kind of thing that you have to think about yourself. None. All right, let's go on. She has no authority. She has no authority. All right. I believe that while pagans glory in the suffering of Yahushua on the cross, we are to glory in his resurrection. Well, that's an observation. That's all that is. The Apostle Paul says, I will glory in the what? cross of our Lord Jesus but there again she threw Paul out remember she threw him out I believe the King James Bible purposely mistranslated the name of the Son of God from Yahashua to Jesus and that this Jesus was being taught the majority of churches today is not Yahashua himself but Satan that's a big statement that's a heavy duty statement because that by making that statement she's saying that the people who call themselves Christians that are worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ are, really, are literally worshiping the devil. See? She didn't come about this overnight. She has a long page on her testimony about how the study in this and been here and done that and this and that and so forth. I didn't read all of it. I just skimmed through it. How that she came to her position. Didn't happen overnight. Yes, sir. I don't know how many have her religion, brother. <laughs> you don't know the truth about it. <laughs> uh, that, <laughs> uh, uh, true. I mean, she. if you get in that page and find out where she's coming from, you'll find out maybe the influence she's getting from so many different places. But uh, I don't know how many people have her religion. No, they don't like Paul because Paul is plain. For by grace are you saved through faith, not of yourself. And uh, no, they don't like Paul. But that gets into Pauline and Petrine. That gets into arguments among Christians. You know, that's the kind of thing. She, this woman's not a Christian. Not in any way, shape, or form, or sense of the word. But what I'm trying to do is analyze her position today. And, and the point you made is very good. Uh, I've never seen anybody else that believes like this. But there may be some out there, some wild stuff going on out there. Now, let me say this. This will help us understand where the church is. To, when I say church, let's say put religion, okay? Religion is a big cafeteria. The people who get in line are super spiritual. They are, they are super, super, super spiritual. They don't need anybody to tell them what to do. They know what they want. So when they go through this cafeteria line of religion... They pull out a little bit over here. They, they like a little bit of Hinduism. They like a little Buddhism. They like a little Christianity. They like a little Muslim. And, and oh, they like some witchcraft. And they like that blood thing. They, they, they you know, they Satanism. They like those movies. They, and so by the time they get through the end of that, that spiritual religious cafeteria line, he's standing there with his tray. And he's super spiritual. It's all about him. And this is what I believe. And he's got it all in front of him, see. And he or she have borrowed from everything under the sun. That's the average American. That's the average American. Fact is, that's the average church member. As far as orthodoxy and a Bible and what people believe in the scripture, like, the, like your parents and your grandparents and your great-grandparents, what they believe, that, that's non-existent. That's a, that's a minority. It's a small group. That's the way the average, the average person. Now, here's the thing. 
Most churches in this country are built upon one simple fact. They're going to make you feel good when you get there. They're going to pump you up in the flesh. And the music you're used to all week long, you're going to hear it on that day, except it's going to have a religious spin to it, adding to your tray. Same thing. That's all you're getting. That's all you're getting. The reason they do that is because they are dead spiritually. There is no spirit of God anywhere around. The old-fashioned shouting and glory to God and went back to a log cabin and rode on the back of a horse and broke ice to get water from a, from a spring or, or whatever. The, those days, are, those people right there shouted and glorified God and didn't have five cents in their pocket. Anyway, let's get back to studying the Bible. Quit preaching here. Now, I believe the King James Bible is the modern-day Garden of Eden. Now, here she has, now, look, she's allegory, all right? She's getting into allegory. I believe the King James Bible is the modern-day Garden of Eden, containing the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now, look at what she's doing. She's created an allegory. Through the two different Gospels being preached throughout it. Now, here we go. The Gospel of the Kingdom, you remember I was talking about that just the other day, tree of life taught by Yahashua, and I bring to you another gospel, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, taught by the false apostle Paul. One leads to eternal life, while the other leads to apostasy, error, and away from the teachings of Yahashua and his twelve apostles. Gospel of the kingdom and the gospel of the grace of God, she just pitted together right here. She just butted heads with them. She butted their heads together. Now, is there a contradiction between the gospel of the kingdom and the gospel of the grace of God? There's no contradiction. It has to do with chronology. The Bible is a progressive book that deals with progressive revelation that deals with the movement of time. When the Lord Jesus was here 2,000 years ago, the king offered the kingdom to the people. They rejected the kingdom, therefore they rejected the king. When they rejected the king and the kingdom, he turned to the Gentiles. When he turned to the Gentiles, he turned to them to build his church. And he says, upon this rock I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That church runs a, sp a period of time. It runs its time. It's called the times of the Gentiles. The church is here during that time of the Gentile. And then the fullness of the Gentiles comes. The church is gone. When that happens, he immediately turns back to the Jews. And now the kingdom becomes in focus again. Because now he's dealing with the Jews and the kingdom because he's about to come back to this earth and he's going to sit down on the throne of David and reign for a thousand years over the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven right here on this earth. He's going to do that. All right? There's no butting heads of them. It's just that one complements the other if you understand it in light of the other. You have to know that one leads into the other. And you can't have the kingdom and you can't have grace, the, the church, at the same time. It's not going to work. And there's a lot of people trying to build a kingdom on this earth right now. They're trying to build a kingdom. Their focus is on the earth. The, the Bible says that our citizenship is in heaven. Born again believers, my life is hid with Christ in God. My citizenship is in heaven. My life is hid with Christ in God. That's where my life is, not here. We are pilgrims and strangers waiting for a shout to catch us out of this world. But you see, what I just gave you is an interpretation. What she gave you is an interpretation, but she made an allegory out of it. Because she said the gospel of the kingdom is the tree of life, and the gospel of the grace of God is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Have any scripture to support that? Does anybody have any idea if she's got any scripture to support that? What is that? The knowledge of, the, of good and evil, the tree of life. Was the tree of life real? Yes. Did he put a cherubim to protect the weight of the tree of life? Yes. Did she, Did they eat of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil? Yes. Now you can get into this allegory. She's not original with it. They've been allegorizing this thing for a long time. What, I'm, what do you mean by that preacher? I mean this. I mean that for hundreds and hundreds of years they have been teaching that the, that the knowledge of good and evil literally refers to the fact that Eve had some kind of relationship with the devil. See, some kind, of a, some kind of a sexual relationship with the devil, and Cain came from that, okay? And that's where the Cain bloodline comes from. She's not original with that. She got that by going out here, digging around, studying, and all this other stuff, okay? You're going to run into that. You're going to run into people who are going to tell you that you're, that you're off your rocker, that this business about the grace of God is just a bunch of garbage. You're going to run into that, okay? 
and the, and the knowledge of the tree of, of, of life, or the, or the tree of life, they don't say that's a real tree. They say that was God himself. You must partake of the Lord. All right? So you can allegorize anything you want to and take any kind of a spin you want on it, but it doesn't make it right. All right? Let's look at the next one. I believe there are 12 apostles appointed by the Lord and not 13. Matthias replaced Judas, not Paul. We dealt with that before. I believe John's warning at the end of the book of Revelation of adding to or subtracting from his book was exactly that, his book. And doesn't pertain to the King James Bible, King James Version, since it didn't exist at that time. Churches abuse this passage to keep their sheeple in apostasy and under religious mind control. Now, how many books are there? It's always referred to as the book. One book. One book. 66 books make one book. One holy book. The Holy Bible. She has to attack these. She has to attack these apostles. I believe the King James Bible contains the inspired word of God. See that term? Contains. But in itself as an entirety is a manipulated manuscript leaving out the inspired books of Enoch, Jasher, and Jubilees. Stop for a moment. Who manipulated it? Who did the manipulation? If, if this is true, who did the manipulation? The King James translators. 50, 50 of them. All right. Under who? King James. All right. Why? Why? In 1611. What was, the, what was going on in 1611 that would cause these men to manipulate the manuscripts of the King James Bible? What she has is a conspiracy going on here now. She has created a conspiracy to support her position. Now, are there any other people out there that support the conspiracy against the King James Bible? Plenty of them. Plenty of them. I've got probably 35 or 40 Bibles in my, in my in, 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 back here in this office. Different translations of everything under the sun. I've got a Jehovah's Witness Bible back there. Got Mormon Bibles. Got the whole thing. Got everything I can get a hold of. If there's another one out there, I'll find it. I'll get it too. But I believe one of them. Amen. That Bible changed my life. That Bible speaks to me. That Bible inspires me. That Bible has fruit attested to it. Amen. That Bible right there has been used of God. That Bible became the standard, and that Bible is the one they all assault. Amen. Notice how she assaults it, but she does it in a different way. Her assault on the King James Bible is saying there was a conspiracy back at the time of King James in 1611. Authority for that. Here we go again now. She's made some, she's made some charges. Is there an authority for that? Have you ever read anywhere of any authority of, 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 of any conspiracy that took place at the time of King James? You're talking about the Jesuits, right? And I'm, I'm talking about King James and his men, but you're right. I mean, the Roman Catholic Church tried their dead level best to infiltrate into the church, into the Church of England, into the, into the translation of the scriptures. Absolutely. They didn't give up on it. They didn't quit. They continue, they continue to this day. Uh, that's just, it's constant. You better believe it because, I mean, here's a little side issue, but Protestantism, if you want to classify it in, in just a big lump, which is which is a big lump, and then the Roman Catholics over here. You got two different Bibles, completely different Bibles. Absolutely, they're not the same. They're not the same. The authority is not the same. They're not the same. They don't agree with each other, and uh, they uh, they ca they came out with the Shalino Reims and the Douay Reims. The Douay Reims, I think it was in 1546, when they had the Council of Trent. In the Council of Trent in 1546, the purpose of the Council of Trent in 1546 was to counter the, revolution, the, the, the Reformation. It was to counter the Reformation. It was to come out and do everything they could to stop this bleeding taking place in the Catholic Church. So in 1546, they had the Council of Trent. If you've ever read the Declaration of the Council of Trent, you ought to read it because they condemned a hell fire everybody on the face of this earth that was not part of the Roman Catholic Church. From that came Ignatius Loyola, who founded the Jesuits. The Jesuits became the thinking arm of the Roman Catholic Church, the infiltrators, the provocateurs, if you please, the ones who went in everywhere. 
and created as much chaos, confusion, and deceit as they possibly could. And their Bible that, was, that they translated that, that came out in direct competition to the King James Bible was the Douay Reims. And that's the Catholic Bible. That's in, I think they still have it today unless they've not. They might have gone to, since these all these new Bibles come out, I don't know what they got. But that's the one that came out against it. Yes, sir. Oh, absolutely. Oh, the yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the whole history. If you get into the whole history, you better believe it. Uh, millions of people died. Millions of people died. Millions of Christians died at the hands of, uh, of the Roman Catholic Church along with Jews. And in 1492, uh, the king, uh, uh, who was the king of Spain, whoever he was, he, she, whoever it was, expelled every Jew from the nation of Spain. And of course, what dates 1492? That's when Columbus from uh, Portugal, uh, Isabella, wasn't it? They gave him the uh, commission, and charter, and some money, and sent him out, and he sailed the ocean blue. Yeah, they burned, they burned to death, murdered millions of Christians. They'd like for you to forget that, but that's a fact. That did happen. All right. Now, he sa she says, I believe it contains the inspired word of God. Okay, contains it. But in itself, as an entirety, is a manipulated manuscript leaving out the inspired books of Enoch, Jasser, Jubilees, and replaced the Roman Catholic agent provocateur St. Paul. By the time I get through with this, there is no Bible on the face of this earth that this woman can take me to. That's the Word of God. Now what's happening here, see? What's going on? She's undermining your faith. Now she's going to build you back up. Okay. She says that she believes that the books who teach and replace the gospel of the kingdom with his own gospel of grace, which leads readers away from the celebrating, celebrating the feast of the Lord and into adopting pagan rituals and customs. I believe that Paul's amorality, becoming all things to all people, compromised the way and truth of the gospel of Yahashua, which grants adherents a license to sin mentally and leads them into false doctrines such as tongue speaking and the rapture of the church and negating the celebrating of the feast of the Lord and the Father's commandment of celebrating the Sabbath on the seventh day. So what is this woman's foundation? Yes, sir. Now, she certainly is. No doubt about that. But what's she building on? She keeps talking about the feast of the Lord and Sabbath day. Uh, the believers have replaced Israel. So what's she, what's she building on? She's trying to change the church into Jews or become like the uh, Revelation says. And she redefines the Jews. Remember, she got into the Khazars. Right. Right. Yeah. Those that say they are Jews and are not. Uh, <clears throat> so what, what, what kind of organization is, is she... Uh, uh, what kind of organization is this woman uh, building? Yeah, right. Now, okay, that's replacement theology. Mainline Protestantism, been teaching that for 2,000 years. See, she's not new with that. They've been teaching that. They, they don't believe in the amillennial, most of them. Yes, sir. She's got a lot from them. She's gotten a lot from them. Well, they're, they're not going to listen. Good night. It's 15 minutes till. I can't believe it. I'm only. Yes, she's certainly into legalism. She's self-righteous. Uh, anybody that uh, gets rid of grace is self-righteous. There's no question about that. All right. Now, what she's going to get into is the Antichrist here. And uh, we'll have to take that up next week. Uh, because uh, she gets into UFOs, aliens, and all of that. 
Is there anything with UFOs and aliens, fallen angels and all that stuff? Let me ask you this. Is there a reality to it? Okay, put it this way. Is this hand real? It's physical. Is my spirit real? But you can't see it. It's invisible, but it's still real. Okay. All right, pardon? The wind is real, but you can't see it, can you? But it's still real. And... Uh, uh, we got a reason for teaching. Amen. The church is so, man, I'm telling you the truth, they just walk into the church, and if she came into the average church and started teaching this stuff, they'd sit around. Boy, man, where have I been all this time? Where's my preacher at? Why did my preacher taught me this? Just sit around their jaw dropping down as if she has some great truth here. Oh, you can't believe anything anymore. Photoshop can take a photograph and they can put you anywhere they want to with anybody they want to. You cannot believe a photograph. Never believe a photograph. If it's been photoshopped by a real expert, you can't tell it. I watched a man in California give a display. He was, I watched him do it. He had a, he had a, he had a horse standing in a field and he, that horse was standing in the field. He literally made that horse disappear. And when it disappears, if you've ever done anything with a computer, you know there's a big white spot there. No, no, no. It filled in every blade of grass. It filled in the fence. It filled in the trees. It gave, it gave, it put in, it put in all the, the, the shading and the structure. And it just like that, bang, he did it in Photoshop. It disappeared. Right before, and he put it right back in. You can't believe a photograph anymore. Don't believe them. <laughs> you can't believe it. You can't believe it. Now, let me say one more time and I'll shut up. Because this kind of thing that it amazes me at the technology. All right? You see these people going to jail all the time because they find pornography on their computers. Pornography on the computers. How many of you have ever had a virus get on your computer? How many of you have ever had malware, spyware, and all this other stuff get on your computer? They can put photographs on your computer. If they want to, they can put pornography on your computer, put it in a court of law, and show them the pornography on your computer and convict you of child pornography and send you down the river, and you didn't even know anything about it. And if you think I'm kidding you, go read, just Google it. Check it out. You can't, you can't, you can't. The only one you can trust is the Almighty. Amen. Yes, sir. Get a what now? Error. E R R O R. Is this when you're trying to watch it live? No, not live. Archived? I'm not a media player. No. And you're getting errors. Yep, errors. Constantly. Off the internet. That's so hard. Yep. You can't watch a whole service anymore. Online you can watch. But you can't watch a whole service. Because it's all online. Have you tried high definition? I tried it. Yep. Did it do the same thing? Now, I'm not talking about watching it and, and it stops for a second. You see the, bl the bar continue on and then it, it's buffering. It just comes up with an error message and you have to restart. It comes right back up and it'll be shut again. Okay. After you get back to the network, it will come back up again. Never lets us go past a certain point once we get that error yeah. message. It's been happening. It was started in the beginning and it stopped for a while. Now it's every time. We can't get through. All right. It's a service on it. Four times I've tried to watch your broadcast. Now you're talking about the internet again? No, I'm talking about a 42 inch television. You're talking about watching it over Comcast? Yes, sir. On Tuesday night? Yes, 